very few stipulations, that on consideration of the diary being supplied to the News of the World, yes. the News of the World would pay 20,000 euros to the journalist. And its purpose would be for exclusive publication. in the news of the world. Yes. So the payment of 20,000 euros wasn't dependent on it being exclusively published in the news of the world. Yes, it was. Paragraph yes, it was. 6. No, yes, it was. They, 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 all, the, all the contracts mm -hmm. were mm -hmm. on that basis because we would run out of money yes, rather sorry. quickly. You're right. I'm wrong. Okay. So the, the next few days, I think the documents show, were devoted to establishing that the diaries were what they purported to be. Yes. Have I got that right? Yes. And then did there come a point, you having established that, that you wanted to ascertain whether or not there, there was consent from Dr. Mac Kate McCann for publication. Have I correctly understood the position? Yes. But the, the, the obvious question, Mr. Marder, is this. Why didn't you not telephone either of the McCanns and find out whether they consented? Because um, Ian Edmondson had assured me on more than one occasion that uh, Clarence was aware of what we were intending to do and uh, had uh, said good. I think it was very clear uh, from Mr. Edmondson's point of view how he spelt out what he was doing. And... Um, uh, indeed, I stressed very clearly by using the phrase that I did not want Kate to come out of church on Sunday morning and find that the diaries were there without her knowledge. But you, you are of course aware that if Dr. Kate McCann had not given her consent to the publication of this personal diary, she would be outraged by the publication. You were that, weren't you? I would have published if I thought that she hadn't been made aware of it. And Mr Edmondson was telling you that he had obtained consent on, on what day? Well, it was absolutely clear from the Friday to the Saturday uh, that that assurance had been given mm -hmm. to him and given again to me. Given... It was going to be a front page story after all, wasn't it? It's which to Friday to which Saturday are we talking about? What date? Um, it, 12th and 13th, the, isn't it? Yeah, in, in other words, the sort of from the Friday conference to deciding, you know, what you're doing with the front of the paper. I see. I, I made it clear, I think, on the Friday by using that phrase. Mm. And I repeated it to him again on the Saturday. And at no stage did he indicate to me that. Um, Mr. Mitchell had told him it wouldn't be appropriate to do what he'd been told we were doing. Given the importance of all of this, why not just pick up the phone yourself and find out? Oh, Mr. Mitchell was a very experienced um, media uh, spokesperson, uh, absolutely. Um, um, I had no reason to believe that uh, what Mr. Edmondson was telling me wasn't wasn't correct. Did did Mr. Edmondson tell you clearly that he had told Mr. Mitchell that a copy of the diary had been obtained via the Portuguese police, had been translated by you, and that sections of that translation were going to be published in the news of the world, as opposed to the news of the world simply using publications which had already been made in Portugal to base a story. No, no, no. My, my understanding was that it was very clear that um, Mr. Edmondson had explained what we had because I think the extracts that had appeared in Portugal were very uh, minor, limited. I don't, I don't know uh, how much they used, but uh, there was a, um, there was a, uh, I think there's a transcript in here of a conversation where uh, he explains that he was trying to get me uh, to, to, to go big with it. 
Um, and I think in the course of that conversation, I think uh, Mr. Mitchell had, had said that he'd, he'd vaguely remembered when they had been used in part in, in uh, the Portuguese um, uh, press um, and that they were obviously very selective. Yes, but did, did Mr. Edmondson make it clear to you that um, he had made it clear to Mr. Mitchell that he had the whole diary and was going to cause extracts from it to be published I, in the news of the world? That's what he led me to believe, yes. Mm -hmm. Because re reading the transcript, and this is something which you didn't, of course, see at the time, the transcript of a conversation... So, sorry, which tab are we? This is tab nine. Yes, you did see it just a few days later on the Tuesday. Hmm. <coughs> four-page transcript of a conversation between Ian Edmondson and Clarence Mitchell on Friday, September the 12th, 2008. Quite a complicated um, document, and certainly bears an, at least one interpretation, probably several. You, you, you saw it for two days later, or two days after publication, I have to say, on the Tuesday, didn't you? This is the transcript of conversation between Ian Edmondson and Mr. Mitchell. Indeed. Yes. As we know, Mr. Edmondson, Edmondson sent it to you. You're the first recipient on the email, aren't you? Yes. Having, having seen that transcript, and I'm, I'm not going to go through it now, why did you apologise to the Mackenzie at all? Unless it was capable of bearing at least a number of interpretations. Well, because I, I, I felt uh, very bad that she didn't know. And, uh, as I've said before, without her um, uh, permission, I, I wouldn't have published them. Mm. I mean, why would I do something as personal as that, um, however much behind a shield of nailing the lies of the Portuguese media and the press? I don't think that would have been sufficient for the grief it caused her, and I had absolutely nothing to gain and everything to lose, given the relationship that we had uh, established. But if, if, if that was your thought process on the 16th of September, why wasn't it the, the thought process you had the previous week, Mr. Myler? Well, because I was given an absolute categoric assurance that Clarence knew what we were doing. Well, you've read this transcript, I'm sure. It, it, it's clearly not... A document that spells it out in words of one syllable, mm. is it? Uh, you know, Mr. Edmondson, given the number of times I asked him for the assurance to make sure that there was absolute <coughs> clarity and understanding, um, had no view that there was. Uh, anything ambiguous in, 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 in what we were going to do. It may be, Mr. Myler, that it's unfair to ask you much more about this, but would you agree with this? This document is most clearly ambiguous. This, 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 trans this is the transcript, this transcript that you were sent by Mr. Edmondson as establishing, presumably, uh, the consent about which you were then concerned and it's not terribly clear would you agree with that I, I, I need to I mean I, right. I only that's, got this bundle yesterday, yesterday. That's, I'm that's, sorry. That's, that's entirely fair enough I'm sorry what was the, the total sum that the News of the World paid for this diary I, I don't know we'd have to check because often when when sums are going uh, into a managing editor's sheet, particularly when they have brackets which says they're still being negotiated, the tendency was for that sum to be negotiated down and therefore it was a running um, memoir, if you like. Um, the chances are that that figure possibly could have come down. So uh, the, the, the managing editor's office will have a record of that. Okay, but you made, you made a donation to the Madeleine <coughs> Fund. Oh, yes. Yeah. Was it a substantial donation? I believe it was. Okay. And an apology 
the following week, I think it was the following week, negotiated with, I think, Mr. Thompson and Carter Rook. And in it was an acceptance and an acknowledgement that there had been a misplaced understanding that we had Kate's permission. And, um, you know, we made that very clear that the last thing we wanted to do was to cause her any more distress. May I move off that to, to another topic? This, this other topic is such that I won't be able to conclude it today. I, don't know how you... I, I think, uh, do I understand that save for Mr. <coughs> Myler, we're not going to find ourselves tomorrow running over a